first moment where you've actually created your own source of money like you've actually like i don't know how to explain it but like it, it's not coming from someone else or like from a, a like a, a boss or anything like that it's coming from you based on your efforts it's like it's a different feeling and i and that's that's what i love about that kind of stuff I have been following along with today's guest for years, but I've been noticing recently, the last few months, that he's been up to something new. He's been putting out blog posts, he's been starting new projects, he's been launching apps, and I thought, what is he up to? What is today's guest, Xavier Foley, doing, spending all his time building out all of these different projects? He is an Avery Fisher career grant winner. He's won first place in so many different competitions, I can't even begin to list them. You have to go to his website to check it out. But he has been not waiting for the phone to ring. He's been building his own business. He went to the Wharton School of Management website and started reading everything about macroeconomics and supply chains and all that kind of stuff. And we talk about that. We talk, go in all sorts of interesting directions, topics very near and dear to my heart. In addition to his wonderful composing and all the other things that he's up to. I've been working on his Irish fantasy for the last few months, and it's just such a cool piece. Can't wait to play it. This is a great one, folks. I know you're going to love it. And a quick shout out to our sponsors, the Dario Strings, Upton Bass, the Bass Violin Shop, Steve Swan String Bass, Encoda, that's spelled N-K-O-D-A, Modacity, A440, and Colstein Music. Let's get into this conversation with Xavier Foley. <laughs> summer besides uh blogging like a fiend and selling carbon fiber bows and writing cool pieces what uh what's your summer been like all uh, right it's been interesting um so uh i've been doing a lot of business things i've uh, i've really been interested in trying to be a self-sufficient musician these days um i mean i'm not really interested in chasing competitions and auditions and you know all these opportunities I'm, i i find myself chasing in the past I'm tired of that. Uh, so I, I want to be able to, you know, build an empire, you know, be able to figure out how to, you know, market stuff and, you know, branding and, you know, and I, I've been studying business things like uh, supply chain management, economics and uh, accounting and stuff like that. Just trying to build those foundations to really uh, figure out how to, how to build a business from scratch. So that's, I, I've actually spent these past two summers doing that. Uh, and this summer I've been just using what I've learned to, to execute and you know just try to try to create value for people you know that's that's just, that's really just the thing here so i was yeah. i was wondering i was sensing empire building cuz i'm like i you know it's, <laughs> it's, it's really it's really been fun to follow along and like i've seen i've seen you know um from from the bow to to getting your pieces out like you're doing and keep it up man i i am really enjoying following along i mean i i i I've, I've started putting up these weekly news updates again i've done that off and on for 10, 15 years, and you have been on every single one of them because it's like, oh, there's another interesting <laughs> project. There's another interesting project. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah. Yesterday, I was actually I had a student over at my place, and I was like, you got to check out this this cool Irish fantasy. And I was like, I've learned the first line. That's it. But I but I played I played uh, him I, yeah, I, yeah. I, I played him your video, and I and I showed her the music, and I played through it like half tempo. But um, okay, so there's there's so much I want to talk about with you. You we, we there's no way. We're 
ever going to be able to cover it all in one show. So we got to yeah. we got to make this a regular thing. But I would, if you're down, because that's like what you're that's what you've been up to right now. Like what uh, what inspired you to start building your own thing? Like, can you talk about that? Because I, I I think that's a super super cool move, and it might be a move that someone from the outside might not expect if they just like looked at your resume. Like what what inspired you to start start this empire building? Um. So when, when I uh, graduated from Curtis, I, you know, I did the typical thing a soloist would do, which is uh, audition for management. Uh, so I got, um, a, 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 uh, there's something called Young Concert Artists, which is a not-for-profit that offers management services. And, you know, that was cool, but I, I just felt like I didn't have any control over my destiny. Like, I, I was really just sitting in my chair waiting for the contract to fall on my lap. And I'm just like, is this really my life for the rest of my life? Am I just waiting for uh, the email to come? Is, is, this, is this it? So I, I, I just wasn't satisfied with that kind of lifestyle. Um, and I was so, um, um, you know, I, when, I, when I work for commissions and stuff, because sometimes people will commission me to write music, I'd often uh, write my back to Philly, uh, which is why I'm here, because I write music in Philly, and I commute back and forth from Germantown. But uh, <clears throat> I'd write music in these business theaters, like the Comcast building. I'd be in the Liberty Place, uh, which is a mall where a lot of business people like to have lunch and stuff. And I'm looking at these guys, and I'm like, man, I know these people are super rich and wealthy. I know they have all these, uh, these businesses. Some of these people have like 20 to 30 businesses and stuff like that. They've got these nice fancy business suits. And they're talking about all these topics, about blockchain, and like it's just – I got jealous, basically. I got I got envious, and um, it being uh, um, uh, around all of that, like all the time, it's just like, man, I want to, I want to know how what it's like to do that. I want to know like what these guys know, because they know something that I don't. And so that's when I started learning a lot of these uh, business things. So what I actually did was I went to I went to the Wharton Business School website. I copied down the books that they had for the curriculum, and I ordered them on Amazon, and I just started reading. Things like one of the one of the interesting ones that really helped me was uh, microeconomics, and you know that talks about uh, supply and demand and, and supply chain uh, management, which really helped, which has allowed me to figure out how to build products and uh, uh, make connections with uh, uh, manufacturers and, and, and transportation and stuff like that. And so it's it's really opened a lot of doors uh, to to these things. So. Yeah. That that is that is awesome. We we have so much in common, my friend. I, <laughs> we we could hang out for like twelve hours and chat and chat with these. It's like you know, I I am on the other coast here in San Francisco. I live in downtown San Francisco, basically, and I'm walking by every day. Uh, I walk by uber and lyft and adobe and oh, you know the, the face the facebook san francisco office and the google san francisco office and i go to these co-working spaces and i'm surrounded by people that are working on their apps and that are uh, yeah. I, 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 I i i right now i co-work out of the amazon web services the aws loft which is where y combinator is based so i'm literally like you know getting coffee right next to all these people so i've been yeah. thinking about that a lot too but but unlike i'm unlike, unlike like you, I did not go to the Wharton Business School and read into all that, but but it's so cool because I was I I was I've been looking at your projects. I'm thinking like, what is he up to? It's so good because he's like you're talking about the developer you've met from China, and then you've got a graphic designer in Mexico, and then you're you're building this airport policy app, and you get you got it approved on Android, and you got it, and you're working through the the iOS, and so it's like we got so much we can talk about. I don't even know where to start. Um, uh, uh, okay, so so. A lot of people listen to this podcast. They're in the car, or they're freelancers, or they're in the cubicle. Yeah. They're doing something. And so, uh, uh, where where would you advise somebody? Because you're, I can't wait to see what you do a year from now or five years from now. It's like super exciting. But like, yeah. let talk for a moment just to those people who are have they've been thinking about they want to they don't want to wait for the phone to call, the, the the phone to ring or the email to come in, right? Uh, yeah. They they want to have some initiative and start their own project. Like where, where should they start? Should they go to the Wharton business school and start reading macroeconomics? Like what's that first step that somebody could do today? I think, you know, it's, it, you know, for me, it wasn't like, Oh, I'm just going to go to Wharton. Like it, it, it came from a, it came from a deep down place of like, 
I either do something about my life and change something right now, or I'm I'm going to be miserable for the rest of my life. That that was the situation I was in, and so that motivated me. Like uh, the the important thing here is motivation. You have to have the motivation to do these kinds of things. Um, like if you talk to me when I was like I don't know 20 or 19, I I and and then you and then I listen to myself right now, I'd be like, oh, I just one of those. I'm not interested in that. I just want to play bass. You know, I just want to audition an orchestra, get a job, and, you know, it's, it, I wouldn't be motivated to do that. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> but once you're motivated and, and, like, you're in that situation, uh, you know, where it's like you feel like even, even though, you know, maybe you're doing well, but you feel like you've hit rock bottom because it's not the direction you want to go, that, that's when a lot of changes happen. And, 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 and so I, the problem for me was I didn't have the proper knowledge uh, to be able to do all these things. So... My solution was to to learn what these people at Wharton knew that I didn't know. That was my goal, and I knew that Wharton was a pretty reputable school, and a lot of you know a lot of uh, CEOs who are pretty famous now and taking companies up to the Fortune 500 have been at that school. So I'm like, all right, so I'm just going to listen to what they say. Just just don't just read the text, make the notes, don't ask questions, ask questions later. Just soak it all in, even though it's all so confusing and it's just not music related. <laughs> Uh, so that that's basically uh, just uh, first having the motivation, and then and then I, I feel like once you have the motivation, everything else just falls into place. It's just a matter of time. Well, some, something I love that you're doing is you're you're kind of on your website. You're like documenting this process of doing these new projects. And I, and, and again, thank you for doing that and keep it up. It's super inspiring. But like you know, you uh, an example is the the like well, let's just take the Irish fantasy. You know, you 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 put that that's out there, and you got a video of you playing, which is which is awesome. As is you know all, all the videos I've watched of you playing. But um, then it's also like behind. the the scenes of the piece and I was talking with yeah. this student I pulled up your blog post and it was like about this video game right it's like uh-huh. is that, was that music T- talk to me about that piece uh like like uh just just tell that story of the Irish fantasy yeah so when I was in sixth grade um my parents took me out of public school and decided to put me in home school because they thought that would be a better uh, solution for my music um which I don't think it was because what happened, what ended up happening, happening was I played video games all day, all all day. Like I played this game called World of Warcraft and stay up twenty, like twenty for seven. And then, and then when my parents would come home in my room, I I I pressed these, this keystroke called uh, Alt Tab, uh, which is which switches the screen, so I switch it to my my home school curriculum. And then once my parents walked out, I'd be like, all right, boys, you know, because I, I do voice chat, I do voice chat with World of Warcraft, and I'd be like, all right, all right boys, I'm back. Let's do that raid. <laughs> you know, um, so so one of the games out of like the thousands that I played during that year, it's just oh my gosh, this is such a great year for me. <laughs> all those games, but one of the ones was called um, Fate. Uh, this was for the PC, and this this is one of those games where you walk in the um, the Costco or Sam's Club. You 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 turn on, you try the PC out, and they have these games uh, pre-installed, and, uh, and and that's one of the games that you uh, you might actually find it if you go to Costco. But uh, it, it, I I got addicted to that. And, and the thing about games is like the same soundtrack, same soundtrack plays like all the time, uh, and you don't really realize it, but you know after. After ten years later, and you look back, you're like, "Oh, I, I know all the notes to this this song." I, I, maybe it's time to figure out what song I was listening to, right? So I, I searched the uh, Fate soundtrack on YouTube and figured out that it was this Irish folk song. Um, so then I was like, "Oh, let, let me see if I can um, make a piece out of this." So that that that's kind of how the how that that works out with because a lot of my my music comes from video game soundtracks because that's all I really listened to. It wasn't Mozart, it wasn't Beethoven. Um, <laughs> Actually, uh, another another uh, piece I have called Cranberry Juice. Uh, there's a lick in there uh, that comes from this game called Starcraft, which mm-hmm. is a uh, pretty, pretty famous one. But yeah, that's just an example of where my influences come from. <laughs> Well, it's a it's a very cool piece, and I I um I I'd love to know because because you've you've got you're 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 composing actively. I mean, you've got this you've got this violin and bass concerto for chamber orchestra, right? That's that's kind uh, of this yeah. all. Okay. Yeah. Um. Uh. What? How? How are you balancing that with? You must be spending a fair amount of time. Uh. On on your on your uh other projects like the the policy app and just what you're doing online how how yeah. how do you how are you balancing out your time right now in terms of writing and working on that how, how's that working for you oh uh, you know I, I basically buy time so uh, 
I don't do all these things on my own. I hire people to do it. Mm -hmm. And that's, I'm basically buying myself time to, to work on these uh, musical endeavors. I, I don't see myself being a, a software developer or uh, like a, or, or like a full-time businessman, but I, I want, I want to delegate that. You know, I, I want to play smart here. I don't want, I don't want to work hard per se, even though that's like what we're taught to do, which is work hard and man, just keep, keep working. Like, I, I, and if that you know that that kind of philosophy was instilled in me in music school and in and, and, and you know every other school I went to, but it's I I, I disagree with that philosophy and I, and I try to work smart and that's why um, I can do all these projects and stuff like that. It's because I delegate a lot of things like the design. I hire someone from right like you said from Mexico to do all of that for me. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a, a developer in China and I'm I'm just a guy who provides a vision and the and the the idea. And say, okay, here's here's what I want the game to look like. Here's what I want this policy app to look like. Here's what I want, um, you know, when I'm when making like thumbnails or something. Here's what I want it to look like. So that's 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 really what uh, allows me to do all these projects. Just delegating my uh, time to other uh, people. And yeah. that's a that's a lesson that. Uh... I certainly didn't learn in music school, and I think yeah. is, <laughs> um, and and I I also have have help with the projects I do. But I mean, for years I just tried to do everything myself, and I and I've wondered. I mean, that that that's that's uh, to to really scale things up that just becomes impossible. And so so smart smart move. Maybe that came from the Wharton Business School books, or <laughs> but but uh, that so that so that's how that's working. Okay, okay. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so, you know. Yeah. No, no, go ahead. I was going to add another thing. Uh, you know, I, I've, I've created many businesses in the past that didn't work out. And obviously, uh, it, you hear stories about people creating businesses and, and being in, 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 in massive debt and, like, liquidating everything. That's ha That happened to me, actually. Uh, so I'm trying to do everything I can. To ex I, like, the only way I could really make it this year is, is if I grow and expand. And, and that, so that's, that's why I, I'm trying to hire people, you know, trying to scale up my advertising because I'm in massive debt right now from – uh, making this business, which was a mobile game publishing business, so I actually published like four other video games on the App Store. Uh, it didn't, it didn't make the return on investment. I didn't know what I was doing, but you know that's so that's another, another, another topic of motivation. It's just like trying to pay off all of that stuff that I, uh, I failed to re make a return on. Buying an instrument or bow is a major decision, especially the first time a student's looking for an instrument. Here's A440 Violin Shop's Michael Spadaro on what he advises. We usually start with a, an approximate price range and we'll show them anything within that price range and then to give them a little bit of context, I'll often show them instruments that are more or less expensive than that. But I, I say to play as many instruments or bows as possible before you buy. Whether you're looking for a new instrument or a new bow or that next step in your journey, A440 Violin Shop has got you covered. Look for them online at a440violinshop.com. And thank you so much for sponsoring the podcast. This episode is brought to you by the Bass Violin Shop, which opened in 2001 as a small double bass workshop in Greensboro, North Carolina. Today, they're staffed by three full-time, highly skilled bass luthiers. And they specialize in double bass sales, rentals, setup, restoration, and repair. For nearly 20 years, they have satisfied thousands of clients by offering quality instruments, knowledgeable service, reliable reliable repairs, and superior restorations at affordable prices. They recognize that traveling and flying with the bass can be a serious obstacle. That's why they now offer several options for the jet-setting bassist. Either rent their removable neck bass for a no-hassle, convenient way to take a bass in a small package, or convert your bass to a removable neck and never be without your companion for those important performances. Purchase their lemur music, Liberty Bell Flyaway. This package includes an airline friendly custom travel case and in minutes you can disassemble the base and you're ready to go contact them to chat about options and find the one that best fits you for more information and current inventory visit their website at bassviolinshop.com and be sure to follow them on facebook and instagram hi this is david moore i'm a professor at the usc thornton school of music as well as a bassist in the la philharmonic gosh i've been using um Diodario Kaplan's for the past several years, the, the heavies especially in the orchestra as well as on the bass that I have at USC. I just really like the, the versatility that they give, especially dynamically. They just respond well in soft dynamics and well in loud dynamics that can really um, take anything that I can dish out. And they're just a really well-balanced string across all of my instruments. I've also used the Zyx strings more kind of in an experimental way. 
I'm honestly looking for sort of the the combination and the sweet spot between the two of those because I really like the the ring and the response and the tension of the Zyx with um, some of the more conventional characteristics of the Kaplan's. So I'm hoping that that's something that's in the works someday in the future. Hope that helps. Oh man, it's so easy to do, and, and in the app, in the whole app ecosystem and app world, I've been I've been um I've I've been trying trying uh, to help the ISB uh, with that the, they have some ideas to do some sort of app, and all the research I've done, it's like well. You know, we're talking the absolute minimum quote I get is 10 grand. And no, no, man. it's more like 30 or up from there, you know, and, and it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's unbelievable. And I, I yeah. have, yeah. Okay. You, you feel that you feel that. Yeah. Funny. People, people will try to rip you off because uh, the, the more, when you talk to a company, the more you demonstrate what you don't know about apps, the more they can basically screw you over. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. uh, you you mm -hmm. can create an app for like maybe uh, $200 if you wanted to, if you knew what you were doing. Uh, like you, you can just buy code from somebody else, like an indie developer who built a similar app that's what you're doing and then just rescan it. And then, yeah, that's, that's a lesson I learned actually. And that's why I, I, I can make this policy app, uh, uh, even though I'm in such deep trouble with the credit, you know, the credit card companies. Is oh, man. You know, I, yeah, so, yeah. Well, the, uh, the, um, I, I have an app for the podcast that I've had for several years, but I, it's, it's through the, it's through the hosting company that I use. So it's like, I, I, I think I paid 200 bucks up front and then it's like $50 sure. a month for the maintenance. And, and even that one thing, which I, you know, I had a, the only hand I had in developing it was hiring a graphic designer and passing along the images. Even that there are a lot of hoops to jump through and then, Oh, the iOS is updating whatever policies and then I have to get on it, get oh, on the yeah. horn with, with, um, Libsyn, the company I use and we have to like coordinate a time for them to get into my account. And it's a, uh, yeah, it's a lot of, it's a lot of little details. Yeah. 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 Uh, so, well, uh, talk, talk to me about this, um, this violin and bass concerto that's coming up. That, that was a commission from, from the, was that from the chamber society, the Lincoln center? Or no, where, where, where the, it yeah. was, it was the Sphinx organization. Mm -hmm. Uh, for those who are listening to this podcast, that's an organization that tries to, uh, to provide assistance for, uh, communities, uh, who are primarily African American and, um, and Latino, and that just comes from like the the history of you know uh, th or the vision of Aaron Dorkin, who's the founder of Sphinx. He he grew up in a place where most of the people in orchestras were white in America, and he wanted to change that and make it more diverse. And that's that's what the Sphinx organization is all about. So that's important to know because this piece I commit that I wrote, I was commissioned to write, is called For Justice and Peace. Uh, and so um, uh, Sphinx is a very socially uh, active kind of organization. They, they address a lot of social issues. And so, you know, there, I guess there's been a lot of stuff in the news about social injustices. And uh, so Afa, who's, a, who's also, who's the husband of uh, Aaron Dorkin, who's now the president of uh, Sphinx, asked me to write a piece uh, talking about, you know, all of these injustices that happen. And so one of the features that I was requested to do for this concerto was to put a gavel in there. Uh, so that, that was really interesting. Um, uh, and, and just being, because I usually don't write pieces that have like a, a social just, justice meaning or anything like that. I just write what, you know, my, my video game influences. Right. But it's a, right, so it's, it's quite a challenge for me, but it's, uh, it, but I, I guess it, it worked out because yeah, I, I like how it sounds and, it's got a gavel in it. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. <laughs> I can't. I can't wait to check that out. Um, and and uh, yeah, I, I'm just. A f I'm such a fan of your writing. I, I. I hope that. I hope that. You know. I. I. I'm, I. I I will find an opportunity to play that Irish fantasy once I learn it. You know, it's that's like my next big project. My last one was Nick Walker's Corral. This one, this is, but I want to, I want to get, I want to get this thing under my fingers. It's just, it's, it's incredibly cool writing. Uh, uh, do you write? I, I always love at, uh, learning how different composers work. Do you write at the bass? Do you write at the piano? Do you write at, on your computer? Uh, are you walking around singing melodies into your phone? Like what, what do you do when you write a piece? Um, ninety percent of the time when I'm doing a bass solo, I just play it. 
right? So I don't actually write the music down. I'll I'll start with the beginning and see what I can come up with next the next day and then see what I can come up with next the next day and then the next day. And then after two or three weeks go by, I have a solo piece right there. That's how the Irish Fantasy uh, was made. <laughs> and then uh, a year later, I was asked if... Uh, or I just kept getting requests for sheet music, so I was like, oh, I guess I'll write this down. So that's, that's why you have the music there. Uh, ten, the other 10% of the time, uh, I'll write it down. Like for a piece I wrote called uh, The Falling Seagull, which is a Chinese-influenced piece, that I wrote down. And actually... Um, I wrote that most of that at the University of Pennsylvania, uh, mm. and I think it was like year 2017. Because I I would I would uh, often walk around Philly, going to various coffee shops, and, and and there's just I shouldn't say this, but there's this building in the U- University of Penn called the McNeil Building, and you just walk in there and have free Wi-Fi, and, it, and you know, and during the hot summer, just the air conditioning that's like really good, they have bathrooms and water fountains, and I'm just like I'm just chilling there, trying to look like a student and. <laughs> It worked out. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, I've got a place for you. I haven't been to it in New York City, but if you're if you're a fan of free Wi-Fi and you want to throw in some free food and 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 beverage too, <laughs> a- AWS Loft and and uh, the, they they only have a few. They have one in Tokyo. They have one in San Francisco. They have one in in New York. Uh, so if you're in New York uh, at, at any point, uh, you know, as long as you have an AWS account, which is free, you can go in there, and that is a uh, that is a great place to work. So if you find yourself in in Manhattan, I know it's in, I don't know where it is in Manhattan, but I know it's, it's somewhere, you know, that's a good, that's a good spot to stop off at. Oh yeah. I know how, I know how hard it is to find a bathroom in, in Manhattan. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's insane. It's almost as hard here in San Francisco. Uh, it, it, oh no. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, the struggle's so, real. <laughs> So, so the, uh, what inspired the music policy app? Because that is a great idea. And to have that on your phone, you can call it up and show that to people. Was there some moment where you're like, okay, this is ridiculous, where you denied, uh, you know, checking in your base? Or what, 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 uh, what, what, what was the genesis of that idea? Okay, so I was never denied, but um, there, were those, there were those instances where – I would have to spend an hour at the gate check-in trying to convince these people that the policy says, your own policy says I can take my base on your airplane. And I, I just, it's just like, why don't these people understand? And like during times like that, it's really hard to, to search and go to the, to the exact policy you know, when you're stressed out. And like, I'll, oftentimes I'd, I'd find myself not being able to locate the page. Um, and so I thought, you know, I, I'm sick and tired of this 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 bull, right? And I, so I decided to make an app where you can simply click a logo and be taken to the exact instrument policy that you need to show these people to educate them on their own policies that you can, in fact, take the base on a plane. It's a good idea. Now, here's the thing. <laughs> it's a good idea, but but. The, the problem is, so I, I had this one instance at the LaGuardia Airport in New York City. <sighs> I don't know, but th- this, this lady, like, no matter what I would say, no matter what I would show her, she just was upset about my base being on a plane. I'm sorry, folks, there's nothing you can do about that. If, someone's, if, if the gate check lady or the man is upset about your base, uh, for being too big, like, it, what what else can you do? So, like, this app is, like, the best I could do as far as uh, arming people with uh, the proper policies to get through that uh, gate, so... <laughs> Uh, I, well, I, once once it makes its way uh, to iOS, which I know it can always be a hurdle to get, I uh, that that done, um, uh, it's going to be on my phone, and I'll I will spread the word far and wide. I think I, if I haven't already, I will continue to do so. But it's a it's a it's a great idea, and I can't wait to see what the next app idea is. Uh, hopefully, it won't <laughs> yeah. hopefully it won't spiral you into debt like the video game. Uh, oh no, no. <laughs> that was le- many lessons learned. <laughs> Yeah. Um, what was that? So, so you get an idea for something like that. And I, I have, I have 
I, my brain is exploding with ideas all the time, many of which are terrible, and um, <laughs> and, and and some of which are good. Um, how how do you how do you pick a how do you pick a rabbit hole to go down? How do you pick an idea to chase? I mean, was this like something that you, it was like the next day you were searching for developers with this music instrument policy, or did you sketch it out, or like what what is your idea to launch uh, process look like? Okay, so this previous app I made, this was, this was actually the first app. I contacted this developer from China, and in, in all my blog posts about the Policy Finder app, you'll see what he looks like. But um, um, he he charged me like a, a ridiculous amount to develop this app, which is a uh, my idea was to make a vegan friendly game where you're the person trying to destroy the butchers and, and like uh, that was my idea. Um, that. It was the the amount I can't even. It was like it was ridiculous. It was like that ten thousand, ten thousand mark. <laughs> I'm like heck no. So <clears throat> I go back to this guy, knowing that he knows that he he owes me because the the app wasn't published. It didn't work out. It was a bad. It was a terrible game. It's terrible game. So I'm like, hey man, do you mind making me this app for basically free? <laughs> You know, you know, because he knew he knew like I, I was screwed over for basically. He was like, "All right," and um, and I, after learning about how the app process, building process works, I knew like what I knew it was a very simple thing. Uh, you just put, you just build links and create a simple UI. It, it's it's pretty simple. Mm -hmm. Um, so I was just like, "All right." Uh, so I went on Microsoft Paint. I paint. I I made this picture of uh. Uh, iPhone with uh, uh, logos on it, like Delta, United Airlines, and I showed it to him. He's like, "Can you build that?" He's like, "Yeah," and, I, and, and it, it was pretty simple. Um, and, and then uh, I showed, I tried uploading that to the I, iPhone store. Not it passed on the Android store, but the iPhone store, the Apple store, it didn't pass because I said it was minimal function. Oh. So I guess all right, it, 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 they want more features, right? So uh, the second stage, I actually paid. I had to pay more because uh, I, I needed more features. So um, I added a, I did a lot for this, by the way. I, I, I rented out a server. I added a chat feature so people could see other people's comments about an airline, like look out for Karen, look out for David. He's a, he's an a-hole or whatever. <laughs> uh, I put this, you know, I, I put in this rating system. We can rate the thing five stars and not. And I, I, I upped the graphics and then uh, I sent it to Apple. They still don't like it. <laughs> Minimum function. I don't. I cause so I don't really know. So my idea now. Uh, so I just right now I just uh, submitted a video game called The Starving Musicians. <laughs> really? <laughs> right. It's, uh, it's it's one of those burger games where you serve you serve people burgers. But this I um I told the designer to design some of my artist friends in there. So it, if anybody in podcast is listening, a, a close friend of mine, you might be on there. But, uh, <laughs> and it's, but uh, I, I, I told the developer, like, okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to see if this gets on the App Store, and then we're going to update the game and sneak in. We're going to sneak in this policy, this policy app thing, and then see how that goes. So if that gets rejected, I, don't, I honestly don't know what else to do. My... Practicing Companion, Modacity, this awesome app. It is so great for getting you to really think about your practicing. And there's what's called a deliberate practice mode. It tracks everything that you are improving upon and time spent in every piece is just so great. Here is founder and CEO of Modacity, Mark Gelfo, on what the app does. I use the deliberate practice feature in Modacity a ton. So what I'm logging my improvements. Oh, I improved my articulation today by using this strategy. And, and then I see that in my log. So I see all the improvements that I made, the strategy that led to that improvement. I see the star rating as well as the time spent. It is so satisfying to be able to look back on your history like Mark's describing. I do that all the time. And it keeps me inspired and energized and feeling like I'm really making progress. Learn more at modacity.co. And if you visit our site, we've got a special offer for lifetime access for this app. Thank you so much for sponsoring the podcast, Modacity. This episode is brought to you by Encoda. By the way, that's spelled N-K-O-D-A. This app is like Netflix or Spotify for sheet music, and they are working with 
over a hundred of the major publishers like Boozy and Hawks, Baron Writer, and more to provide sheet music on your device. I have an iPad Pro, but this also works on Android, and I have so many pieces from Encoda loaded up on it. I have all the Beethoven symphonies and their scores. I'm circling things. I'm flipping between the score and the part to show students. I totally love this app, and people like Sir Simon Rattle are singing its praises. It really is the next thing for musicians. It's a subscription service, and you can download Encoda from your app store today for a free trial. That's N-K-O-D-A. And thanks for sponsoring the podcast. This episode is brought to you by Steve Swan String Bass, which is home to the largest collection of double basses on the West Coast between Los Angeles and Canada. That's a lot of miles, folks. Steve's showroom is outstanding absolutely worth a visit. It's located just south of San Francisco Airport, SFO, and he has about 70 bases on display. And these bases range from student entry-level instruments all the way to the finest professional instruments. I've sent so many students and referred so many people to Steve's shop. He really does great work. And if you're looking for a base, you're going to find one that suits your needs your playing needs and your budgetary needs for sure. Steve Swan at stringbase.com is where you can go. And thank you, Steve, for sponsoring the podcast. I've said it a million times. You're making something by hand out of wood. You can do everything right and it can still go sideways. That's Eric Roy of Upton Bass talking about their concept of no B stock. And though it's painful to work a piece of wood for days and discover some flaw, the right call, and this is what Upton does every time, is to just get rid of that wood and start new. You never know what's going on under the surface. Despite your best efforts, wood is an organic thing, and Upton takes its commitment to quality seriously. Learn more at UptonBase.com, and thank you so much for sponsoring the podcast. It's a, it's a mysterious black hole of non-communication a lot of the times with, with Apple. Um, it's, uh, yeah, and and a, lot of, a lot of folks, they start with the iOS. Uh, you were using a develop, uh, an outside developer, so it's a different story. But I, I, ta- I, I can't develop my way out of a, out of a hole. But, I, but I, folks I talk to that have developed apps, um, you know, it's, it seems like a lot of the time the a- Apple's the thing they tackle first. And then they try to get to the Android, you know, but it's oh, yeah. <laughs> complicated. And so, um, but a lot more people have Android. So it's cool that that's out there already. You know, but musicians though, like, I, I, I don't know. Like all my musician friends have Apple. Like, I, I don't yeah. know what's going on. Maybe, maybe it's just me. <laughs> I've only used Android. I've never used Apple. So it's like, I, I don't understand the Apple world at all. So I'm just, you know. When I started the podcast, I was I was on my Acer laptop, totally in the PC world, and I remember I, I was going back to school in Chicago, and I remember somebody in one of my classes just started making fun of my laptop, which is valid because it was like one of those giant gaming type laptops. It had like uh, the, fan, the fan on the side, <laughs> you know, like your, your hand would get all hot, you know, just sitting. Yeah. Next to it. And I and I just something about being shamed by my by these musician friends. I like went and I was I was sort of. Thinking thinking about going into the Mac world and then that was maybe 2011 and now what I've got my iPad in front of me I'm holding my Apple pencil got my Apple watch <laughs> got my iPhone talking to my MacBook Pro I'm all in Hello. but I but it's a it's an expensive and locked in world so I, I just yeah. sort of I drank the Kool-Aid kind of wish I hadn't but here we are <laughs> so, you converted <laughs> I I ended up yeah so now I, yeah anyway but um so uh, what do you wish if you could go back, if you could like add something to a music music school curriculum, could be Curtis or just any music school, because obviously you you you've acquired a whole new skill set and you're trying trying new things. Um, it's tough though when you think, oh well, let's just revamp the music school curriculum. It's like, well, what do you take out to add in something new? You know, it's 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 a it's a it's a tougher thing that people might realize. Um, what what. What would you, if you were talking to someone designing a music school curriculum or looking to overhaul one, like what do you think would be useful for people to learn outside of getting really good at bass? Um, that's a good question. And I have to say, I, I think we're doing okay as far as the music curriculum because out of any music, any school you go to, no matter what, if it's like music or, or finance, whatever you're doing, 
we, we go to school to learn a skill set, right? And we yeah. focus on that skill set. We, we typically take out loans so we don't have to work, so we can just focus, focus, focus on getting the skill, perfecting the skill. Um, I, I really think, um, you know, there, there was this entrepreneurial class at Curtis, and I didn't really listen to it because I didn't really think I feel like I needed it. But once I realized, once I was done with school and once I was in the real world, once I was out of that um, that carriage, that baby carriage, you know, being taken care of, and you know, the the, the, the management departments taking care of, like, uh, you know, they're hiring the test guy to take care of my taxes for me, and they're they're making sure my loans are good. Like, once I was in the real world, I, I had to actually learn things. Like, it a lot of things change, and and then uh, I I think I don't know I. I I, I know this isn't the answer you want, but I, it's I, I, when I when I graduate, it's like now I understand how important all these things are. Now I'm going to listen to these things because my life depends on it. Right? That's <laughs> yeah. kind of what you know. It's like, oh, I hear you. No, I don't have a good answer for that either. Because like I think if you're not ready to receive the message, the message is not. Uh, you know. Yeah. Like, uh, right? Yeah. yeah. And I and I don't think we should, okay, let's dilute everything and try to make everybody a music entrepreneur, even though maybe that's not, it, it's, you know, those are, that's a, it's certainly a valuable skill set, even if you're, uh, even, even if you're, even if you think you're going to end up in an orchestra, I love probing your brain about that in particular, just because if someone from the outside looked um, and they saw everything you've done, I mean, you're, you sort of, you have this resume of just like success after success. You know, I, I know that the, 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 the feeling is very different, I'm sure. Big, but if you, if you just look from the outside, you're like, wow, he's, he went to Curtis, you know, studied with Edgar Meyer, Hal Robinson, one, one, you know, you name the competition, he's, he's doing the chamber music society he's being commissioned but we look and you're doing all these other projects so hmm interesting so i i, I, I <laughs> yeah once i'm starting to do all these other things you're like oh what's i don't know what that is like I, like, like you know you win something like i don't know a bodice competition or kutsavisi competition and people are like oh wow look at that it's so great but once you're like oh i'm starting to learn uh blockchain uh to add security onto my uh database server you're like but that resonates so strongly with me. I mean, I, 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 I've gone down so many of those. Like, I, I, I became obsessed with Ableton Live and electronic music production, and I have this whole weird skill set from that, and audio editing skill set, and, and all these things. Um, was it is it the is it the challenge of something new that that sort of get, gets you going because obviously these projects are getting you going i can just tell you're you're pumped about you know working at, is it is it d, d, was were, were you feeling like uh just what's next just in terms of like trying to find something to inspire you or getting those creative juices going like like what, what I, I just i i don't have a great question but maybe you're, you can sense what i'm getting at but like what what was it was it just the challenge of something new or the prospect of something new you know when you walk into a store like a convenience store and you buy something what 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 typically happens is you get a receipt there's this word big letter four letter word so is it yeah it's four letters it, it, it's the letter is it, the, the word is sale the sale you know I, i'm like I, I keep seeing these receipts and i'm like man how do people make how do people sell stuff and I'm just, just like, that. that's just been on my mind, like, ever since I graduated. Like, how do I sell stuff? Like, I, I know I can play a gig, a gig and get a paycheck. I won't understand where the money come from, comes from. Like, you know, I, or I'll, maybe I'll get, like, a, a award or something random out of nowhere. But I, I just don't understand where that money comes from. And after a certain point, I just got sick and tired of just, you know, getting these checks where it's just like, where does this come from? How? Did, what, whose money is this? And it's just like... I want to. I want to make my own money. Like I, I, I log into my PayPal account, right? To, you know, maybe I, I just give people like the. You know, I go out to a restaurant and say, oh, I'll, I'll pay half. But it's just like, I, I realize that people actually get money into their PayPal account selling stuff, and I, I pay people by PayPal to do a service, and I'm like, man, how do I get paid? You know, like how do I get paid like that? So it's just like. It's just one of those things, you know. It's a be- it's a beautiful thing. I I had this moment uh, when I because I decided I was moving out to San Francisco. Let's just do something new. Just you know, hang out my shingle and and I just pretend that all these things I do are my full time job, and then they actually became my full time job. Which is, <laughs> but I, I had I had this great moment. Um, 
you could probably relate. I'm, I'm on a run in San Francisco, right? It's like this beautiful morning and I'm just, I'm running outside and my watch taps me and it's a sale on pay, you know, pay money coming into my PayPal account. And I, yeah, was, like, yeah, yeah. And I was like, I literally just made money on this run. Dude, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Like the first time that happened, I'm like, I got an email saying you got money. <laughs> like, yeah. But it's, the thing is like, you get a check from playing uh, like uh, uh, yourself from the orchestra it's like all right this is just the normal thing and it's just part of the part of the thing but like at at that that first moment where you've actually created your own source of money like you've actually like i don't know how to explain it but like it, it's not coming from someone else or like from a, a like a, a boss or anything like that it's coming from you based on your efforts it's like it's a different feeling and i that's that's what I love about that. Yeah, stuff. no, and it's it's something that I think we 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 aren't exposed to so much if we're in the nonprofit world, right? Yeah, because uh, we're yeah. Do, we're doing things that don't. There is not. Uh, the, people might not realize this, but there's not an expectation that the San Francisco Symphony is going to cover its costs, right? It's it it, it makes it. I mean, they have to balance their budget, but it's coming through grants and donations, and like I, I am not directly getting a check based on the need that someone has but like if someone buys your irish fantasy you you are directly serving this need right and that's like and you're just cutting up the middleman and moving to the for-profit world one of my jobs is i work for eastman strings i'm the product manager for base and that has been so refreshing getting into the the business world after spending so much time in public education and orchestras and all that where it's just like everything the the, the pace of innovation in uh, in the, the business world and in your own projects, I, there's there's just much more of a direct relation to like the effort you put in and being able to measure it, and it's a, I, I find it incredibly refreshing. Oh, it's it's, it's it's just so great to have control of. Yeah. <laughs> What what do you see? Uh, let's just go five years down the road. What do you see your career looking like? What do you want? What do you want to be doing? And it'll be fun. We got to do a podcast in five. Well, we got to do one sooner than five years from now. We got to do one in five years and see the answer to that. And I don't have a good answer for myself, by the way. But what do you what do you see? Uh, you know, the thing right I'm trying to do right now, and and it's gonna it's a long process that might take five years. It's which is. Uh, being able to work a thousand times smarter than I'm working right now, um, you know, and just having the courage to scale up. Um, so, like, I I'm kind of timid and scared right now at this point because, like, you know, I, you know, when you do, you, I'm sure you advertise and you know you run ads and stuff like that. Uh, I, I'm, I'm afraid to up the budget because. I, you know, it's just like I'm not, I'm not. I feel like I'm not ready to scale up, and that's just one of the things I want to be able to do in five years, just to be able to feel comfortable having like ten businesses and also self-sustainable, and you know, uh, having this thousand-dollar ad three, to three thousand-dollar ad budget a month, and just like being a business. You know, that's, I, you know, I don't, as far as playing bass, you know, I, I don't know. I, I it, it's because I, I enjoy creating music, but I also enjoy this kind of thing that I'm doing because it's, 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 it's expanding my mind in ways that music couldn't do. Um, so I, it, it, it's kind of a scary thing to think about, honestly, for me, uh, but it, it, I don't know. <laughs> so I, I hope that answers your question. Thank you. 
Xavier, you're on fire, man. It's so exciting to follow along with what you're doing, and it makes me think I'm not working hard enough <laughs> when I see what you're up to. And I think, ah, I've done enough. I've written enough. I've blogged enough. I've whatever. Nope. You, I just love what you're doing and the path that you're blazing, and it's so cool. XavierFoley.com is his website. Pick up his music. Support him however you can. I just really am enjoying seeing what he's up to. And thank you for listening. It means so much to me to have people along on this journey with me and with all the people that have been on this podcast for the 12 plus years we've been doing it. If this is your first episode, subscribe to the podcast. It's free and it's a great way to stay in touch. You can do so on whatever device you're listening to this on. There's a way. ContraBasedConversations.com slash subscribe will let you know. And you can get on our email list. And in addition to getting info on the podcast, you can get what's happening in the music world, what's happening in the bass world, weekly updates on that. Contra Bass Conversations is produced by Michael Cooper, Steve Hinchy, Trevor Jones, and Mitch Mooring. Mitch is making award-winning bases in the Dallas area in downtown Kilgore, Texas. Look him up online at mitchmooring.com. Thank you to Krista Copper for archiving and cataloging everything we do here on the podcast. Couldn't do without you. Thank you so much. Thank you for listening. I'm your host, Jason Heath, and we'll see you again soon for more life at the low end of the spectrum. Uh-huh.